Have you ever wondered what's the big deal about prayer? Why do Christians talk about prayer? Why do Christian leaders talk about prayer? Well, there's a scripture in John that's just very humbling and instructive on the matter. Jesus said this in John 6, The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But some of you do not believe me. Human effort accomplishes nothing. What a sobering idea. Something Jesus was trying to teach us, to show us that we needed to live and move from the supernatural, from the kingdom of God, from God's power and not our own. And that lays a basis for why prayer is so important. Prayer helps us connect with God in such a way that we glean resources and strength and power from Him rather than from our own energies. And so this is the, the main reason or a base reason or an important reason why Christians need to learn to pray. And so in this series, Pray First, we're talking about how that we should come at our lives from the perspective, from the even high position of prayer. The apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a distance of a half a mile. When they arrived, they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. They all met together and were constantly united in prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. In this text, we, we see, before the Holy Spirit comes in Acts 2, we see the church, the followers of Jesus, gathered in prayer. In that, we see how the church really started. It started founded upon prayer. It started out of prayer. And so we shouldn't lose that. In fact, that first almost 300 years of the church's existence was so powerful. And a lot of that was because they depended upon prayer. And so how, how can we become more dependent upon prayer? How can we practice prayer more? How can we enjoy prayer more? And that's what we'll be talking about in this series. So let's take a moment and learn from the early church, the church that learned to pray, the little church that learned to pray, because they started out pretty small, but they got big really fast, and you have to know that prayer was a key part of their growth and their strength and power. So the first thing we learned that they were able to do is that they learned to wait in prayer. Jesus told the disciples, I will send the Holy Spirit just as my Father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. So they came together and they prayed. They prayed together in one accord, the Bible tells us in the King James translation of Acts chapter 1. They, they were in prayer for at least 10 days. They gathered, prayed, and waited. And that's something we could learn to do. We could learn to wait for God in prayer. And you know what waiting is? Waiting is exactly what it says it is. It's waiting. For what? Well, for God to do something for God to change things, for God to show up, for God to reveal, for God to pour into us. So we could learn to be patient in prayer. Now, it's very difficult today because we our lives move so quickly. We're so distracted. We're so busy moving to the next thing. It's hard for us to find even five minutes to sit in stillness. But we need to learn to break that, to, to get free of the bondage of busyness and distraction and learn to wait in prayer. Not only did they wait in prayer, they actually taught new believers how to pray. The Bible says this in Acts 2. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. You see, this was kind of like the core values, they wouldn't have called them that, but the core values of the early church. And it was gathering together, listening to teaching, doing communion together, sharing communion together, and praying together. They practiced this together, and they taught it by making sure everyone caught it. So they came alongside, and prayer was just a big part of their culture and what they did. They also learned to strengthen themselves in prayer. There's a story told in Acts 4 where Peter and John get into trouble with the Sanhedrin. Um, they get told to be quiet, to stop talking about Jesus. They get a, a, a beating over the deal, and then they're released with the orders to never speak of Jesus again. Well, when they came back to the church, this is what happened. As soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. You know, they should have been frightened. They should have been quiet. They, they should have been nice. That's what was expected. But that's not what the early Christians did. Those first believers, rather than being quiet about the greatest 
answer to all, everything ever known, Jesus Christ. They went to God in prayer. Instead of being nice, they went to war in the supernatural. And they started praying, and they strengthened themselves. We find out later in Acts 4 that when they were done praying, the building shook, and they left that place with such boldness to share the gospel, to break the orders of the Sanhedrin, to not obey Satan's leadership, but to follow Jesus Christ's leadership. So, the early church, they, they learned a lot about prayer, learned to wait in prayer, learned to strengthen themselves in prayer, learned to teach others about prayer. So we need to realize how powerful prayer is in our life. In fact, we need to understand that Jesus' most powerful and practical promises are realized through prayer. Yeah, do you struggle with temptation? Do you struggle resisting sin in your life? Jesus said this to the disciples on the night before he was crucified. Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. So clearly Jesus saw a connection between a strong prayer life and actually living practical righteousness. Not just pretending that uh, you're righteous when you're not, but actually living practical righteousness he saw as a fruit of prayer. The ability to resist sin as a fruit of prayer. We also need to realize that when we pray, now anything becomes possible. We serve a God who doesn't know what impossible means. Jesus said this, I tell you, keep on asking and you receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open for you. When we start praying, now anything is possible. In fact, we if we could just begin to pray about the impossible things in our life, if we could start there, we begin to see God do do impossible things. We begin to see that God can make possibilities happen that we never thought of before. And so when we pray, man, we move into a new place of possible. Think about it. I mean, if if you had uh, if you knew that if you prayed for 3 minutes that God would do something or 3 hours, if you knew this. Well, here Jesus says, "Keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking. You'll get the answer." It's an amazing and a powerful promise for whatever you're facing. So when we strengthen ourselves in prayer, victory is possible. Even if we didn't imagine it before, imagine that it could be before. When we pray, anything is possible. But when we agree in prayer, now we even strengthen the possibilities. Now we, we reach a whole new level of prayer. Jesus says this, I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. Well, all right. What's the distance between impossible and possible now? When I start praying, that distance shrinks. When I gather a brother or sister together in agreement, we pray, that distance again shrinks. When I move in this gift, this discipline of prayer, I'm moving in a whole new place, a powerful place. Now I have hope that I never had before. Possibilities begin to present themselves I never could have dreamed of. This is why we must learn to pray, learn to enjoy prayer, learn to enjoy waiting on God and stop leaning on our own strength. Human effort is no value to us. We need to move in spiritual strength and spiritual power. If we as Christians today could reclaim the discipline of prayer, the gift of prayer, the changes, the radical changes we could bring on our world would surprise us, would be, would surpass our wildest imagination. So I, I ask you, pray first. Pray first. Let's learn to really pray. <laughs> 